Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba' Ahabati fillah Islam encourages us to visit the pious people to visit and sit with the ulama This is from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and husna suhbah you know having righteous companionship is from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had the most righteous of companions the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een Ahabati fillah just sharing with you my personal experience walillahi alhamd yesterday being the Eid I spent my time with one of the Fudala, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him, uh, a student of knowledge who spent his time seeking knowledge in Yemen and in Egypt and benefiting. And I had the opportunity to spend my Eid with the brother and benefit from him. And it helped to increase my Iman. And it helped to encourage me to come back to Talib al -ilm and come closer to Allah and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he shared many benefits. Because when you sit in a gathering of the people of good, they remind you of good. For example, if you sit in the gathering of students of knowledge that are serious students of knowledge, they will remind you of Allah. They will remind you of Masail al-Almiya, things about the deen, ahkam, research, looking into issues. And those things which will bring you closer to Allah and bring you the beauty and the joy of Islam. But if you sit in the gathering of the people of the wicked, or even just people who don't have much khair, much good to offer, then that's what they'll remind you of. They'll remind you of the latest joke. They'll remind you of the latest movie. They'll remind you of things that really, in fact, waste your time. Instead of those things which will bring you closer to your Lord. Imam Anawi, rahim, uh, ta'ala, he entitled a chapter in his book Riyadh al-Salihin, Bab Ziyarata Ahl al-Khair, wa Mujalasatihim, wa Suhbatihim, wa Muhabbatihim, wa Talab al-Ziyaratihim, wa Dua Minhum, wa Ziyarat al-Muwadi' al-Fadila. Imam Anawi, rahim Allah ta'ala, he entitled, and in the translation, they translate this kind of incompletely, and I'm not exactly sure why... But they say the chapter of visiting the pious persons, loving them, and adoption of their company. But in fact, if we look at some of the statements Imam Anawi said, he said the chapter of visiting the pious people or the, the, the people of good and sitting with them or accompanying them and, uh, and suhbati him and being companions to them and loving them and seeking to visit them and seeking them to supplicate for you and visiting them uh, for their pious and righteous uh, and, and because they are people of benefit. So this shows us the importance. But let's go to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How does this help us to be better by sitting with people of good. Listen to this hadith. This is the hadith of Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Wa Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qala Abu Bakrin li Umara radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, ba'da wafati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in talaq bina ila um al-ayman radiyallahu ta'ala anha, nuzuraha كما كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يزورها فلما انتهي إليها بكت فقال لها ما يبكيك أما تعلمين أن ما عند الله خير لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقالت إني لا أبكي أني لا أعلم أن ما عند الله تعالى خير لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولكن أبكي أن الوحي قد انقطع من السماء فحيجتها فحيجتهما على بكاء أنس بن مالك رضي الله تعالى عنه he reported after the death of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم أبو بكر said to عمر رضي الله تعالى عنهما 
let us visit Umm Ayman radiallahu ta'ala anha as a messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to visit her. As we came to her, she wept. They, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma said to her, what makes you weep? Do you not know that what Allah has in store for his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is better than this worldly life? She said, I weep not because I am ignorant of the fact that what is in store for the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hereafter is better than this world, but I weep because the revelation has ceased to come. This moved both of them to tears, and they began to weep along with her. Ruahu Muslim. Ahabatifillah. There are immense benefits. As Umm Ayman, she was from Ethiopia, and she at, uh, was the slave girl of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's father. And after the death of his father, Umm Ayman anha, remained with the Prophet Sallallahu mother and took care in his upbringing Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had set her free and then she married Zayn bin Harith Radiallahu uh, Ta'ala So Ahabat Allah, this hadith illustrates for us the importance of good company, good, good uh, companionship and being and visiting the people of, of Fadl, the people of Khair and goodness, and those people who offer benefit. And this shows us also how the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, that they were so serious about the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they even wanted to visit those people who the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, took time and, and made special time for in order to visit sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een also this hadith shows us that the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een also had such great love for the revelation for the quran and that when it ceased and when it became clear obviously that there would be no more revelation after the Quran and after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they cried. Um, uh, um Ayman, she cried for this reason. And what this caused Abu Bakr and Umar Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhum Majma'een to cry. And it should cause us to cry. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.